Oh, to you be the glory of what you've done and are doing. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Y'all can be seated if you want to. Hallelujah. Or we can run the aisles if you want to. Or you can jump the pew if you want to. A lot of it is, has to do with our want tos. You can come around the altar and seek him if you want to. You know, a lot of it has to do with our want tos. Got another good crowd this afternoon, and um, I, uh, I'm, I will still be on the road tonight when most of you all are heading for the bed. Get all rested up for service in the morning. You all will. I'll be getting home in time to uh, have service. But uh, I just uh, this has been wonderful. The blessings of the Lord is wonderful. I want to go right ahead seeking the Lord, and not be a bit inhibited. I got um, I got a verse. I just got a verse I want to read you, and uh, I uh, I uh, I know uh, I I I know I know that uh, the beginning. I know that the beginning of any the beginning of things is um, it, it's important. It's it's important. Uh, the, the other night I was at home and I was kicked back in my chair and I I didn't feel very good at all and uh, I I was a little. Uh, I just didn't feel good, and about 11 o'clock, telephone rung, hello, and it was sis on the other end of the line, and she said, uh, you and Sister Hyatt still up? I said, yep, still up. She said, if we brought a girl above the house, can you and Sister Hyatt pray her through tonight? Yeah. And so um, a little after uh, about 11.30, going on 12 o'clock, we met Amy. Amy come in the house, sat down, talked a little while to us, wheeled around there at the couch, and uh, started praying and seeking the Lord, and got up with such an expression on her face, and looked so wonderful and just fresh, and just just a instantaneous change in her countenance, like the like the Bible will relate that it happens. There was a, Moses. There, there was a there was a facial change on this young lady, and yet. Wednesday night while I was at church, when she come through the door, I know that she's still dealing with the live-in. I know she's still dealing with an out-of-wedlock child. I know she's still dealing with the fact that uh, she feels uh, a little inhibited in our church because uh, on the uh, ladder of, um, of economics, she's very, very low, and she wasn't able just to go out and get her a new wardrobe. And so she feels a little out of place with her blue jeans. She need not, but she does. And uh, Wednesday night when she came through the door, I knew her dad had just died. And I knew I could tell by the expression on her face. And I worried about her all during church. Uh, we, uh, we had a move of God, and there was a, um, there was a visitation of conviction. And when the altar call was given, she wheeled around back there in the pew where she was at because she was embarrassed to come down the aisle. And uh, all the ladies flocked back there. And uh, when she got up, she had that, that look of peace on her face again. But I went through all that to tell you, I, I, I'm, I'm really thrilled when people start out. But I'm having a hard time getting folks to finish. You know, I, 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 don't, I, don't, have, I don't have a hard time getting, uh, getting my uh, young folks excited about starting revival. It's it's them being as excited at the finish of the revival. I, I I'm having a hard time getting folks to finish. I don't know if it's just the uh, I don't know if it's the pressure. I don't know if it's the age. I don't know if it's an axe and a hammer that I have. I don't know. I don't know. But I do I do know this one thing, that the intestinal fortitude of some young folks is almost zero. Because um, one youth camp blow up, blow in, blow out, and uh, gone. Just just in just in that length of time, those those five days. I mean, you started out being a you started out as, uh, with missionary aspirations, and the next thing the next thing I know, you you're missionary to the fairgrounds or you're missionary to the ball field. 
and uh, they've, they've lost it. And this ain't going to be long, and I'm not going to get all lathered up. Boy, you heard some preaching today. I mean, I mean, there's, that, 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 was, that, that was wonderful. And it's singing right up here. I mean, I mean, it wouldn't do me a lick of good launch into singing. Of course, I haven't had any requests, but it wouldn't do a lick of good uh, for me to launch into a singing. Because you could see right, right, right away, right away, I, I couldn't even breathe and keep up with that last song, let alone sing the words at the same time. I'm telling you, I mean, I, that was wonderful. And, uh, of course, the service last night was wonderful. But I, I just want to read this. I just want to read this. This ain't going to take long. I'm going to kind of talk to you, teach to you, talk to you. And I'm, I'm sure that you're going to listen, right? Is everyone going to listen? Is there anyone in here that had... Is, Oh, I know you will. I, I just know you will. I, I can just tell. I can just tell. I don't, I, I'm not here to modify. I'm here to modify your hearts, not your skull. So uh, I got, it's a new, it, it's, 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 not a new, it's not a new thing, but it's in the old part of the Bible in 1 Kings, if, you'll, if you want to turn there to 1 Kings. And uh, boy, I know what I'm preaching in the morning when I get back home. I know what I'm preaching. I don't, want to preach. I don't want to preach tomorrow night, but uh, I'm open to suggestions. If anybody has anything on your heart, that, uh, hallelujah. Just to be honest with you, what Darius preached was pretty good this morning. <laughs> if I could just, if I, if my hair wasn't gray, if I had dark hair, I believe I could preach that message like that, but I can't do it. I can't do it. It has something. It's just First Kings. And it's in chapter number 6, and it's just one verse. And that verse is uh, verse number 14. Just kind of short right there. So, that's how it starts out. So, Solomon built the house and finished it. Lord, if you'll help me for a few minutes just to talk to these youngins. These moms, these dads, these teenagers, young adults, if you'll help me, I'll, I'll praise you in thy name. Amen. So y'all can be seated. Think boring right now. Think Sunday school class. Think, think school. Think, think English class. Think torture. Nouns, adverbs. Ha <laughs> ha. There went a participle right there. I took care of that and don't even know what one is, but it looked contagious. I, um, I actually, I was, I, actually, I was going to be, I, I know you can't, I shouldn't tell you this. I, I was studying to be an English teacher. High school level English. That's what I was going to teach. I was going, number one, folks don't talk right, and I was going to help them talk right. You know, they, they call tires, on, in, uh, tires instead of tars, like that's what they really are, tars. And fires instead of fars. Uh, you know, they, flowers instead of flowers. Uh, they, you, you could get more words in if you talk right. <laughs> you know, my tar run over a far and mashed the flower. You, if you, if you, if you, but you... Well, anyway, I didn't make it. I didn't make it. I ended up, um, I ended up being a, a, a preacher. But I'm going to tell you this. Out of, all the, out of all the wisdom, all the wisdom, all the wealth, all the power, out of all the wives, out of the kingdom, everything to run, you could also add contractor to the list of things that Solomon took, took care of. He was a builder. He he he, uh, he took care of stuff, and um, I uh, I know that Solomon's dad David had a dream for a, a a temple a tabernacle. He had a he had a dream for the for a house of the Lord. But because of David's lifestyle, because he was a fighter, and because uh, I I I I would say because of some of his immoral choices that he made, he. Uh, he was a little less than perfect for the building of God's house. So it came down to a fellow by the name of Solomon. And uh, 
this is what I want to tell you. If you don't do anything else in this world, recognize that you are responsible to build the temple of the Holy Ghost for the Lord. You're responsible for that. You, you getting this? You, you will. You, 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 get, you're, you are responsible to build the temple of the Holy Ghost. That's your job. That, 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 that's your job. And that's why, that's why this guy by the name of Solomon. Now, I, I'm going to tell you something. Now, I, the Bible lists him as having a bunch of wisdom, and that's okay. That's okay. The Bible says it. I believe it. But that man had more wives. I, now, I know, wisdom, okay, okay, okay. It's okay. It's what about, okay. I can, I can live with that, but he, boy, you know, he, just let me kiss you good night, 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 night. You know? Just, he got more wives than, and then all them combines and stuff. He was a farmer too, but listen, I, I mean, hold it. I said, I had a little trouble with English. But, but you know, I, I, uh, I, I, I do know, I do know that, that, that Solomon, when it come time to build the house, he had, he had construction on his mind and he had completion on his mind. And, and I, uh, I, I, I mean, that's two necessary goals that if you young folks would just grab them two things right there. I am obligated to construct and I am obligated to complete. Now, if you do that, some of you would not be dating or in love with the guy that you're in love with. If those two parts of your life, those two areas of your life was as they should be, some of you guys would not be attracted to what you think you're attracted to. I, uh, it's going to be boring, I can tell it is, but uh, I, I, or you can tell it is, but I, 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 know, I know that these two goals in our life, construction and completion, you don't have any choice in the matter. I mean, you're going to build something, and judgment is going to finish it. And what you do between here and there matters a whole lot about where you're going to spend eternity. A whole lot. You got that? And I, I, I'm going to be I'm going to be cautious here, but but on that on that construction part, there's there's the groundwork, and then there's that framework, and then there's that laboring work. And 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 Solomon was not afraid of a formidable task. He wasn't afraid of taking responsibility. We also call that growing up. Solomon was not afraid to grow up. And you cannot be a child all of your life. And if you are 30 and you still love your thumb, you really need to see a doctor. Solomon wasn't afraid to grow up and take on responsibility. He wasn't afraid. Uh, Brother Martin, you know them, James Martin, with all the kids, 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 all the children, the wonderful children. You know what Sister Martin said the other night at our church at the piano? She said the Lord promised her that if they'd do the will of the Lord, every one of her children would be in the work of God. Wow. Woo. Wow. That, that knocks out quarterbacks. And that, that, that knocks out track, and that knocks out bull riding, and that, that knocks out calf roping. That, I just saw one go by. That, that, uh, no, that was a cat. We went for Chinese food. Uh, we, but that knocks, out, that knocks out all those areas of your life, all of them. Yeah, that, that, doing that work for God. Solomon woke up every day with two things on his mind. Number one, start this thing. And number two, finish this thing. And the reason that it was necessary was his father had handed him down plans to get the job done. 
Now, I wish that every young person in this house had a mom and dad that has outlined a spiritual life for every one of you and have already handed down your course in life. But sad to say, sad to say, sometimes we're not all that blessed to have spiritual leaders at home for moms and dads. When that happens, there has to be a substitute, not in the building materials and not in the job, but there has to be a substitute in the, in the plan work. And God says, I'll step in, become your father, see to it that you have the plan that I want, and you can still construct for God and finish for God, even if you're the only one in your family doing it. I, uh, I had bleeding ulcers oh, so bad. I mean, you talked about, I had a bleeding ulcers. I, no wonder, no wonder I, I just loved English class. I felt so bad and you could sleep in there and still not miss <laughs> much. But I, I had bleeding ulcers bad. Oh, man. In fact, they were considering holding up graduation a couple of days just so I could just so I could be. They were so glad to get rid of me. They was willing to go a couple more days. And and my 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 ulcers uh, my my ulcers stemmed from the fact that there was a lot of discord in my home and it didn't bother my brother. He was athletic basketball player, college man and uh, girlfriend bound, married down at the altar kind of guy, and he was already up and gone. But I was still there at home, and when Mom and Dad get into that fussing mold and that stuff, I, I couldn't just pass it off. It, it so affected me. I had my, my hiding chair. Anybody that got one of them ever know what I'm talking about? I had a place in the house in the far back bedroom that I could go and get down in the floor and crawl behind the chair and lean up against the bed and while they were fussing there in the kitchen, I could find a certain amount of peace there behind that chair, I thought. But although my outside had found a hiding chair, there was no place for my insides to hide, and I erupted into bleeding ulcers. And really, the night that I genuinely got saved and told my mom and dad that I'm done with college, I'm done with the marching band, I'm done with the music, I'm done with all that, I, I'm, I'm, I'm quitting the court, I'm quitting everything, and I'm, I'm going to serve God. Uh, that, was, that was before Terry Boland had called and asked me. When, 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 I, when I announced that news to my mom and dad, I, you would think they would be so happy. You know, just say, oh, honey, that's wonderful. But, you know, sometimes that start is not the most wonderful thing because I had I, I mean I mean I, I can't tell you how long that it was before my mom ever started liking Terry Bolin I mean she just didn't like him at all he come by picked me up we took off down the road and he, he was we was going and he, you know I wasn't preaching around here and coming and next thing boom here I am did you get all that I didn't think you wanted to go through the whole year so I just kind of rounded it off but 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 all this all this transpired and, and I'm telling you, because success in God meant so much to me and means so much to me, I have decided that without even parental consent and without parental response, right now when I call home, I say, Mom, how are you? Oh, you've been preaching too much. Your voice sounds so bad. I know it. And I've had it operated on twice. Cut that little that little callus off on my vocal cord. Cause I got to talking like this. I sounded like Brother Addis. And I and and I, okay, okay, okay. But when I got in this thing, Mama, when I got in this thing, I didn't get in this thing to just be a church member, or to sit in the back or in the front or on the side. I didn't get in this thing. Just, I'd go to youth camps. Didn't like them. 
Didn't like them. But I'd go to them anyway, and I can't remember exactly what night it was, but one night I was at a youth camp, and this is really going to date me here, but uh, I, that was back when Ronnie Harrison and Johnny Wade Sloan was preaching. So you, you young folks don't even know some of those names. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I don't know some of the new names. It's okay. But I, for some of the folks who do know, that dates me. And I, I was sitting there in that youth, uh, sitting there in that youth camp one night, and Ronnie got up there with that guitar, and he got to uh, singing, uh, walk, I Have Hope. I, I think it's the only song he knew. I have hope that, you all know that song? It's real, 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 real popularly old. I have hope that, uh, he got to singing that song, and I was sitting there in that pew, and I said, I can do this. I can do this. When I walked out of the tabernacle, they said, what do you think? I said, I think I can do this. I said, in fact, I not only think I can do this, one of these days I'm going to do a youth camp. Of course, <laughs> you know, just a bunch of, that's just a bunch of garbage, just a bunch of hogwash, except watch your mouth because God can hear even your thoughts afar off. You be careful about that. And I, I tell you, the next thing that happened in my life was the ministry. You've got to have a plan. You get this? You got to, some of you young. I'm, I'm telling you, what, what, what do you want to be when you grow up, 30 year old man? Uh, what, what, hey, 45 year, hey, 45 year old guy. Yes. What do you want to be when you grow up? You've got to have a plan. Something in your heart and in your life at whatever age. I had a plan as a kid sitting at youth camps listening to a guy. I, I, my plan was already, I'm going to replace that dude one of these days. I mean, that was already in my plans. That was already in my work. That night I was sitting in my little Karnak church, sitting back there on Sunday nights. I'd sneak out to go home and watch Bonanza. I love little Joe's horse. Black and white little pinto thing. And anyway, anyway, you know, <laughs> I was sitting there in church, and Lloyd Whistler got up playing a saxophone, and I said, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. So after church, I walked up there, and I said, uh, I said, uh, I can do that. Uh, he said, you want to try it? And I said, yeah, I, I, I'm going to try it. I'm going to do that. And, and it sounded, it's so, so, it, uh, kind of, it sounded sort of something between uh, a cat that just got run over and the uh, 83-year-old woman who ran over it. <laughs> something right in you know, just just kind of a squishy sound of a thing. A little wrinkled and just, that's what it sounded like. That's what, that's what it sounded like. And, uh, and you know, he uh, he said, you're not holding your fingers right. And I, I, I just I said, I can, I can do that. I can do that. And he said, uh, I got an old horn out in the car. Do you think your mom and dad want to buy it for you for a hundred bucks? So I I said, I can do that. I, I can do that. To this day, I don't know one note on that horn. I don't know where G is, C is. I don't know. I don't know. If the piano player don't know where it's at, I'm sunk. I just go where they go. And I, but you know, and I know that some folks, I, 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 told, I told mom, I said, I, said, I, I, I can do that. So, can, can you? You got asthma? And you, I can do that. I, I, I can do that. Mom, I can do that. I really can. I, 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 I really can do that. That's when I bought one of the, it's the biggest CD some of you young folks have ever seen in your life. They're about this big. I mean, it was back in them days when CDs looked like dinosaurs. You, you not only could listen to the music, you could put roast beef and potatoes and green beans on there. You could eat 
your dinner and listen to music at the same time. Dinner music is what they, they call them things right there. And I, 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 I put, Lloyd had that, that thing, I put that, I put that on that record player. That, that's one of them things with an arm and a needle that comes down like this and it, <laughs> until, and I, I put that thing on there. Are, are, are you as bored about this as I feel like I am? But I put that on there and I, I, I played, I, I, I listened to that and I played it and I, 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 uh, I, I didn't do so good with my first song, but I, if they'd have just been a little co closer, I could have probably called up about six or twelve geese by the time I got finished with that honk thing that I was coming up with. And I played that thing, and I, I, I played it again, and I played it again. I'm not talking about, we, we, we starting, boy, we got these folks. Uh, I had a plan. I had a plan one day that I was going to take that horn over to the church and tell Brother McClellan, I'm ready to play a song. I had a plan. And I start you got to have a plan, you hear me? You got to have a plan. I'd get that I'd get that record out and put it on that thing and I'd start and my mom would say, I'm going I'm going over to Granny's. Call when you're finished. Gonna hurt my feelings there just a little bit. And my dad would go uh, my dad would go fox hunting. And and the dogs were so glad to get away, they tried to drive the truck. I, but I played, I played, and I played, and I played, and I played, and I played. You've got to have a plan. you got to have one. You've got to have, solid, you've got to have a plan. And if you got a plan, you won't marry just anything that comes walking up. If you've got a plan... You won't fall for anything that, uh, you young ladies won't fall for anything that has blue jeans and lips. If you've really got a plan, you hear me? If you've got a plan, you've got to have one. If you don't, if you don't, you're going to get in a mess just like everybody else. Who doesn't have a plan? Well, I'm going to go down there to that altar, and I'm going to get saved, and I, I'm, I'm going to start living for God. And you get up from the altar without a plan, Without any, 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 any desire to change whatsoever, do anything different than what you're doing, and you mess up everything when it comes down to that part about having a plan. If you have a plan, everybody you meet will not fit in that plan. You'll fit in that plan. My college did not fit in my plan. My, 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 my bachelor degree did not, I didn't fit in that plan. I didn't fit. Some of the young ladies that I had been dating did not fit in that plan. The four guys that I was playing the, the piano for, that every one of them uh, smoked, uh, uh, smoked like a, 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 a freight train. Every one of them get on a bus. Every, and, 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 uh, it's amazing. God had asthma and like to died with tobacco smoke. But it, they didn't fit. It didn't fit my plan. I mean, I'm up on the front porch. George, yes, I can't play the piano for you anymore. Why? I got saved. Well, we're all Christians. We've all been singing. We're, 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 all, we're all Christians. I, and you know, I... Uh, I, I, I am sorry, but I just can't continue traveling with you guys and playing because of my plan. I, I had a plan that started, and, and the difference was I had no intentions of not finishing it. And that's where the rub comes in. I mean, a bunch of, boy, today, woo, didn't we have, nah, didn't we have a service last night? And boy, woo, this morning, the brother there, boy, I'm going to go back to, I'm going, I, I, I'm going, and I'm glad, and I, and I want you to, and I want you to, but I want to see you this time next year. Because I'm not just interested in how you start, I'm interested in how you finish. I mean, I mean, best friend. In the world that I had walked up to me and said, can I start going to your church? And I said, yes. Be glad for you all too. He said, can I set my drums up? I said, we don't have drums. I said, we could use a set of drums. 
I said, you got a TV? He said, yes. I just kind of stood there a minute like I do, trying to figure out a plan. I could see I needed one quick. He said, I'll get rid of it if you want me to. Now, that's a plan. Now, that's a plan. Now, sometimes if you just stand there and look dumb, somebody else will come up with the solution. You know? I mean, I just did. That's, what my, that's how my wife asked me to marry her. I just stood there and looked dumb. <laughs> Kidding you. Kidding you. I'll give everybody 50 cents if you don't tell her that next time you see her. Hi, sweetheart. <laughs> I love you, darling. <laughs> but listen. And 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 we started. We started, man. We start. Well, here you we we start. We start. But but the finish. Are you a different drummer? Different set of drums. He has a different home now. He has a different family now. And it's that finish. It's that finish that I'm worried about. Don't just marry anything. Because you're afraid you're never going to get married. Have a plan. Have a plan. Have a plan. But, but, but you don't know how it is. I, I understand because I, I was born good looking. And I have been. Don't sit there and look at me like that. I mean, but I have, I mean, I, I have been born. Did I mention I hate tall skinny people? To you, did I mention that? But I, but I'm telling you, you've got to have a plan. And when you get, and when you get that, and that, that, that's what the young folks don't. We, we ain't got that. We ain't got that. No, I'm sorry, I'm not interested in you. But you're beautiful. Well, that's all right. But I am not going to marry. I am not. I am not going to marry somebody that 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 that's got more junk in his ears, mouth, nose, and throat than a car lot. I am not going to do it. You've got to have a plan. You hear me? you got to have one. And, and, and Solomon did. And the reason that you backslide is you don't have a clue of what you ought to do. You ain't got a clue of how you really ought to live. That's why some young ladies can, can be in an altar screaming and hollering about the blessings of God on a Friday night and go to the mall on Monday and buy enough stuff that would embarrass embarrass half of the World Council of Churches to see them wear it. They don't have a clue. They don't have a plan. Not, a, not at all. But I, and I don't mean to be crude about this, and I don't mean to be rude about this, but when you start out building the temple that God intends for you to build, you don't get to pick the clothes. He's already picked them in the Word of God. Modest. And when you go to building this temple, you don't get to pick the roof. He's already told the boys, you keep your roof short. And you keep, girls, your roof long. He's already told us. Well, now, brother, I'm going to tell you. No, no, no. And I'm not even going to tell you. I'm not telling you. I'm up here just relating the fact that the Bible has already given us the plan. We've already got it right here. Right here in this house, right now. Uh, well, uh, I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Is, it, is, this, is this right? Or is this right? Is this, is this right? I'm, I'm telling you, I see someone just, just, just work, work, work at what they wear just so they can keep it on. It's just it's, 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 it's pitiful. And then there's some guys, I just, you know, you, I, every now and then I just want to stop the car and roll down the window and say, pull your britches up. All six pair. Pull them up. It's called the layered look. Or something. They start with them down around their knees and work up. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Pull your pants up. Why? Because it's a good plan. It's a good plan. And put, 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 you know, it's, it's a good plan. Okay? So here you go. It's time to go shopping. Okay, go with the right friends. It's a good plan. Go with the right friends. 
Go with the folks who think like us. Fellowship with young folks that think like us and sit in churches like us and live like us. Because when the Bible says to be separate, saith the Lord, you already have to draw the line somewhere. So draw the line at school and at the mall. Draw the line during summer. Draw the line where you draw the line someplace because, brother, sister, not only did Solomon have a plan, he was willing to pay the price to make that plan work. Now listen, listen. I, yai, 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 yai. I could have a bigger church than what I've got right now. I could. I really could. I, I, I could. I, I could. And I know you, I, I could. Well, it's surely not because you're preaching. <laughs> you're, you're surely right. But i got to have a bigger church because I've already had them there. I've had them there. When they come through the door, and I don't know them from Job's turkey twice removed from Thanksgiving, and they've got a guitar, I say to myself, i got troubles tonight. That's when you go looking around for the pastor and realize that you're him. <laughs> you know, sometimes church bosses are handy. Uh, could you please walk back here and tell this guy that he... But in there, and, uh, and, and, now, and some of them folks, they're just as green as a gourd about the way we have church. They don't know how narrow-minded we really are. They don't know that they cannot get on my platform. No! On the platform. They don't know that. They don't know how narrow-minded we really are. They, they, they really don't. They, they don't know. They don't know. Now, there's some folks that are narrow-minded, and they're mean with it. I'm not mean narrow-minded. I'm nice narrow-minded. No. You can't get on a platform. No. No. No, you can't get. And they come through the door, and, and they, they got guitars. And I, I had this one guy walk up, and he said, but, but, but you ought to hear us sing. Uh, well, I, I, we, 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 can, we, we can do that sometime. That we're all down by the creek or whatever it is and having marshmallows and mosquitoes and everything else that goes with it. We can do that. But, but, and then, then they keep gravitating. Then, then they, get, they, get the horn, they get the guitar out and strum it back there in the pew while they're sitting there. And, and you know, you know they just, sometimes they just push me. Sometimes they just they just push me until I just have to just smooth things over, kind of weed it and smooth things over, because I have a plan, and that plan requires a price, and I'm not going to sell out because it will ruin the plan. So, I walked in the thrift store the other day. That's also a great plan. I went in the thrift store the other day, and this girl, very, very tall. She's very, very tall. Uh, very tall. You don't know how tall. Roger Boyd is 6'2", and she was taller than him. You know. And I had already determined when I went up there to the cash register, I was not going to come out with any tall jokes. Boy, it's hard, though. He's working at me. That'll be three dollars and what? <laughs> but sorry, sorry. I'd already decided I wasn't going to because she could probably whoop me and Roger. She could have been the basketball goal on some court, but she's standing there, and I had this lamp of a deal of a thing, and I'm going to tear the top of it off and pull the cord out underneath it and turn it upside down, and. It'd be exactly what I've been looking for. Okay. okay, my wife doesn't like my decorating either. But it'd be exactly what I'm looking for. And I stood, I was standing there looking at that, and she said, that's $2.98. I said, I know it. You think I can preach with this? And she, she said, uh, right. she said, I have a question. 
I mean, line full. full, full. I said, okay. She said, it's about the Bible. Okay. That's, that's what I major in. That's my plan. Okay. She said, where in the Bible does it talk about, and she mentioned a certain kind of marriage between different nationalities. And she said, where in the Bible? And I said, well, you've got to run back over to the book of Genesis and look at Noah and his three sons, and you've got to work all the way through that. And I said, I'll explain that to you. And I stood right there in line and explained it to her. I said, but really the question is, are you a quick Christian or is he a Christian? Because if you're not both saved, you can't marry him anyway. Her face, she said, where is that? I said, now that is in the New Testament. You can't be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. And I said, I'm assuming that you feel like that you are a, a, a Christian. And by the time I got finished, I'm not even sure she assumed that she was one. But there's a plan. You hear me? There's a plan. And there's a price to that plan. You mean, you mean, you mean, I love him. You mean, you mean I can't have him? <laughs> no. <laughs> you can't. But, but he, he, he don't believe like I do. He, he don't believe like I do. No. And the older he gets, the less he will. And there will be a day. I set one of my young ladies down in my office and I said, if you marry that piece of flesh, I said, the first time you come back in this church, sit down in that pew and raise your hand and say, pray for my husband. He won't come to church with me. I said, I will stand up behind the pulpit and rebuke you openly. She dumped him. Sometimes it's better to dump them than to get rebuked openly. Just spread that love. I got a plan. And the plan requires a price. I, I, I can't just let everything... I don't, I don't let everything... We're going to have... Boy, some of them area churches in my area that are, they're, 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 <laughs> I mean, they put it in the paper. Gospel singing, Friday night. Come as you are and bring your instrument. No! I can't do that. It ain't a good plan. It ain't a good plan. I can't do that. I can't, I can't because I, I have everything from many pearls. You don't know who that is. To um, Britney Spears. Walking, I have everything up there on the... I can't, I can't do that. And the reason I can't do that is the price to this plan. It costs something when you have a plan. It costs Solomon the years of work and the putting together of materials that his dad had for him. And it's cost us the years of materials that God has put together for us at the cost of His Son that we could have such a great plan. And I'm not going to sell it out as cheap as some folks sell it out. I ain't going to sell it out for a song. I ain't going to sell it out for a, for, for a musician. I ain't going to sell it out for a preacher. I ain't going to sell it out for a date. I ain't going to sell it out for a boy or a girl. There's some things that are not for sale. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. You're really not? I'm not. I'm not. Now, some of my young married couples come up to say, uh, Brother Height, we need to ask you something. And in the same breath, oh, never mind, we already know. That's a plan. That's a plan because I didn't want to know anyway. I mean, I didn't want to go. But, but and I, I'm, I'm quitting because i got a long way to go. But after, after you get you a plan, and please, I'm asking you young folks, from the sincerity of my heart, grow up quickly. Get mature quickly. Come to the age of accountability. Know what you're supposed to be. Know what you're supposed to do. Become your pastor's best friend. Become the church janitor's second in command. Be available to sing. Do whatever it takes. 
be willing to mow the yard, be willing to come to my house and weed eat. I hate to weed eat. Come, come, just you know, ride around with me and pay for my gas. Just, just, well, I need, do, get your plan, get that plan, recognize that, that there's a price to it, and then get ready to perspire. Because I'm going to tell you something else. Sometimes it'll sweat you to make a right choice. Sometimes it'll sweat you. Sometimes you're the only one standing there in the entire school in case you have, don't happen to go to a Christian school, which nowadays that's even a questionable title. But, but, but you know, there's going to be times that it's going to... I, 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 can't, I can't do that. I I I I I I I can't I can't I can't I I I I can't I can't do that I can't do that. I can't do that and you, you, you know, now there's some folks they enjoy so I can't they, they want to be the loudest folks in the room I can't do that they want to be the loudest folks but there's some folks that are meek and mild like the Bible says and I I I can't do that prepare this is going to sweat you some there's going to be perspiration. In this building, you're going to have to work at it. I've, ne- I've never seen. I, I, I don't guess. I, I, I don't. I don't guess I've ever seen anybody in my life try to be a child of God without some kind of effort and some kind of hard work. I, I don't think I've ever seen anybody really make a child of God that didn't develop some muscles, some spiritual intestinal fortitude, and 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 get up of a morning and the first thing on their mind was not their job, but it was their God. And the first thing on their mind was not school, but it was devotion. And the first thing on their mind was looking holy and not looking like everybody else. I tell you, it'll sweat you. There's a perspiration that goes into what you do for God. But I'm telling you, when you come down to the end of it, and you got a building that's presentable, that the Lord feels welcome to come inside, you will be glad that you grew up and took some responsibility and done something eternal. I'm, 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 I'm done. I'm done, but not, not until I tell you that uh, Solomon finished it. Yeah. The day finally came. Oh, yeah, it did. <laughs> the day finally came. The day finally came. The day finally came. I saw an angel go through here. I think it seemed like a... Saw, I was a preaching and I saw a bright light. I said, boy, boy, somebody call that hen guy and tell him. But listen, 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 listen. I don't know his number either. Listen, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, there come a time that it was finished. He was done, and he stepped back and he said. Look at this, preachers. What do you think about? I'd like to take a little. I would like to take a little text inside that church and talk to them about the things out of the Pentateuch. The what? I never say words that I can't spell. I drive a Mitsubishi and ain't never spelled it at a motel yet. Right in the little thing. Well, what are you driving? Car. C A R. What, 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 you want to buy it? <laughs> what, what did I ask for? What kind of mileage I get? Listen, I'm telling you, so, so, uh, boy, we'd like to say, woo! I'm telling you, the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir is a wanting they're just a licking shots uh, to get in that tabernacle so they can sing and have a wonderful move of God. And here God leans back, and there's such a visitation of the glory of God in that house that he built that the preachers couldn't preach and the singers couldn't sing because he inhabited the finished product. And when he inhabits the finished product, you don't have to have anything else. Do you hear me? You don't have to have anything else. You and God is a majority. You and God at work. You and God at school. 
You and God, it's a majority. You and God, hallelujah, I think it's Him trying to get me right now. You and God is a majority. Yes. Yes. You don't have to have it. You don't have to have it. No, you really don't. You don't. Now, I, 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 I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't like, I, I don't like contemporary music. Now, just don't, no. <laughs> just take a deep breath. Just, 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 just take a deep breath. I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it because it really, you know, if you took the words away from it, and there wasn't something in there every once in a while about, Get it out! you can't hardly hear that anyway. <laughs> if you took, if you, if you took that out of it, you know, then you could. Probably just go right ahead and do whatever anybody else wants to do with it, because there's no difference in the beat and the stuff. But, 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 but. Before you have a stroke, don't have a stroke. This is a teaching service. We are not having a healing line at this moment. Don't have a stroke. Ambulance come in, run the whole thing. Listen, don't have a stroke. When you get it built right. God moves in. And everything else has to take second place. All the way from the preachers. and the pre- Have you ever been in a service that God moved in and the preacher didn't get to preach that night? Or have you ever been in a place when God moved in and the song you had practiced on in your choir, you didn't even get to use it? Have you ever been in a service like that? Well, that's the kind of life God wants you to live where it's you and Him. Anything else is a bonus, but you don't have to have nothing else. You and Him, that's all it takes. And I'm quitting. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Uh, Let's turn this on. Yeah. I may use both of them. Just always wanted to. But, but listen, for all the folks now that's just irritated because I've been in the Old Testament all morning, and for them that the Bible doesn't start until Matthew, I'm going to Timothy. And I'm going to tell you about a guy who was fixing to check out of this world. Yeah, he's going out. He's out. He's out of here. Very, 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 very successful jail ministry. Very, very, very successful missionary programs. Very successful sailor. Dynamite swimmer should have been in the Olympics. I mean, he knew how to handle wildlife. Snake handler. I mean, successful. Paul was successful with all those endeavors. Successful. Y'all be in good cheer. I had an angel visit me last night. Said everything's going to be okay. Just stay with the ship. I mean successful. You hear me? Successful. And I, I can't describe to you the rigors of that jail. And I can't describe to you how cold and musty it must have been. But he needed a cloak. And he needed some scriptures at different times. And he needed the parchments. He needed a few things. He needed a few things. A few things. At a few times. Turn this one off. I'll be right back. He needed a few things at a few times. But it come down to the end. It come down to the end that he was standing there in this jail. And he had his parchment. And he had his pen. And he had been writing. And this is what he said. Timothy Bubba. I charge thee, therefore, before God, not just here at Brother Miller's church, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Boy, you're a fine example. You're to preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, 
reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. And he looked around in the jail where he was standing and he hollered out, For the time will come that they will not endure sound doctrine. Just wanted them to hear that up there at the guard's post. Yeah. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away from the truth, their ears from the, and they shall be turned into fable. And the guard grabs the key, slaps it in the door at the end of the hall, and he hollers, they're waiting on you, Paul. We're coming after you now. He runs that way. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. And they walk up in front of his cell, and they look at him and say, Into the road, boy! And he grabs his pen and he says, For I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a plan. You hear me? That's a plan. That's a plan. That's a plan. When you're 30 seconds away from getting your head chopped off or you're, you're 90 years old and you're fixing to draw your last breath or you're going 80 miles an hour down the highway and, and, and the cars, are, I mean, that's a plan. I have finished. That's what I want you to do. That's what I want you to do. I'm glad you're here this year. Oh, yeah, I finish. Finish. Boy, I'm glad you prayed. Finish. I'm glad some of you young ladies said, I'm going to go home and I'm going to live whole. Finish. Finish it. Finish it. Finish it. Oh, God. These young folks, these moms, dads, this, this afternoon, this... Oh, yeah. Services tonight. Nope, we're going to be scattered out. Some of us going different places. We'll all be gathering in our own respective churches in the morning. Time change over in our part of the country. But we'll all be going to church. I'm going to be walking in that church. And there will be people that didn't even know I've been gone these last two days. They will have no idea that I drove half the night. They won't know that I'm going to get up Monday morning and drive again, come right back up here. They don't know this. They don't know this. But after 18 years of pastoring, they know that I have no intentions of not finishing. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish. I'm going to finish. The holiness standard and things that me and my sweetheart have had we have denied ourselves things that are not biblically wrong, but they were not conducive to us finishing. I really figured children would figure into me and her little ministry. We love kids so much. And we ran, I really figured. But, but no children. No children. But we did not allow that to cause us to not finish. Everybody everybody that I've met didn't like my preaching. Whew. Me neither. But I didn't let that I didn't let that cause me not to finish. 
And then it, I didn't like help me not finish. And then it caused me not to finish. And so we're going to make an altar call here. Somebody kind of think about something spiritual to play on the piano. I, I was not Mr. Popular. Uh, is there anybody Mr. Popular here? I was not Mr. Popular at all. Not, not, till, not till they found out I could play my horn. When the school found out that I could play the horn, and then suddenly I become Mr. Popular, and then I resented it. I was not Mr. Popular. Randy was Mr. Popular. Star basketball, star, star, Mr. Popular. I guess he probably every cheerleader ever went to our school. He dated him as uh, Mr. Popular. You hear me? Mr. Popular. I wasn't Mr. Popular. In fact, even when I was lost and acting like a goose, they all told me I'll probably be a preacher of some kind. It's amazing. But the day came that I was at Karnak, parked the trailer out back, walked up to the house. Mom, not there. Dad wasn't there yet. My sweetheart was putting stuff together in the trailer, getting it back, back into order again, gluing the plates and getting the glasses picked up and swept up and stuff, getting everything back like it was. And there was a knock at the door. And a dog. <laughs> Can't hardly remember the dog, but he must have been there because I heard him. But there was a knock at the door. And when I walked up there to the door, there was two little boys standing there. So I got ready, you know, in my mind. I'm going to either get... There's these two little boys standing there. And I didn't know if what I was going to be buying, getting, you know, and... Uh, so I opened the door, and I reached out, and I said, can I help you boys? And this one older one of the two little boys said, my dad wants that I should meet you. My dad wants that I should meet you. So I said, well, okay. And about that time, this guy stepped around the corner smiling, and my mind went whirling back, 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 and I saw him make a free throw that won the game at our homecoming. It was Randy. And he said, you know, he said, uh, I hope this doesn't offend you, but he said, I want my boys to meet you. And I said, okay. He said, uh, we were always everything, and uh, you were hardly anything. And he said, now, you are everything. And what I thought was important is nothing. And he said, I want my boys to meet somebody who made a life with something besides a basketball. Or made, you know, and I was so taken back that if they'd have been selling Girl Scout cookies, I'd have bought some. I was so taken back. And I, I saw a hint. I saw a hint of a tear in 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 his eyes. I saw a hint of a tear when he turned around, and put his arms on the boys, and then I had a hint of a tear because I would have loved to have had two little boys to put my. And we we both had a hint of a tear. And from that day forward, and I'd already decided, but from that day forward, just for two little boys that I met one day, I'm gonna finish. I'm finished. And one of these days, when it works out well with you, bring your little boys to me. I'd love to meet them. When it works out, just bring them up and say, this is Brother Hyde. Just bring them up. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be embarrassed. It's part of the finishing. It's part of the finishing. I mean, it may not bless them, but it'll be a blessing to me. It's just part of the finishing. If I was in this room right now, anywhere in this house, and I had doubts about whether I had what it took to make it all the way to the end, I'm just sitting on this pew, and I just rode the bus because my buddy asked me to. I just came today because the girls all got together, and we was going to spend the night over at the motel and eat donuts this morning. I was, uh, For whatever reason, you may be in here. If there's anybody sitting in this room right now that says, 
I think a few minutes in the altar would help me completely dedicate to the point where I could finish this thing. You know, go ahead, Sister, sister where you at? Just anything, anything, anything. Uh, I am weak, but thou art strong. Jesus, anything. But if I was in here right now, and I felt like, and I felt like, and I felt like, I mean, we've shouted, we've had, if I was in here right now, and I felt like I ain't got what it takes to finish, I would not finish this service today unfinished. I'm going home. I wouldn't finish this service today unfinished. Well, Brother Hyde, just have us all bow our heads and close our eyes and we'll raise our hands. We'll, nip, nip. well, have us all, if we all just stand and everything, we, it's the herd complex. We can just come. No, no. You've got to have a plan. The price is being able to get up when everybody else is sitting around. The price is getting up when your friends right beside you won't move. The price is moving to the altar right now. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, by the time you get finished with the perspiration, you'll be glad that you made an eternal choice.